In case you're just joining us, you're watching today's business with me, David Babadike. Yes, I intimated earlier that we'll be having a conversation with uh, uh, the, the, the director of research and advocacy from the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Dr. Matthew Joe, and the focus is around uh, NIPOST regulation. So, uh, good morning, Dr. Matthew. So good to have you join us on the show. Good morning. Thanks yes. for having me. So let's let's hit let's hit let's hit the ground running. Let's hit the ground. What exactly are the concerns of of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, as regards the the NIPOS regulations? Exactly what are the concerns? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, you notice that uh, that release, the regulation, the new regulation that was brought out, uh, talked about incrementing the licensing fee. Unfortunately, that seemed to have uh, clouded out. Other, 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 concerns. other concerns. But uh, beyond the increment, if you look through the, the, the released regulation so far, you will find out that one, the, 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 that regulation is talking about that courier services, those who render courier services, will be expected to, to remit 2% of their total annual revenue. Yes. And that 2% is meant for uh, postal development and also rural in the rural areas. areas. Yes. Uh, that, that's a major concern. Uh, since you said I should just be specific, I'll just yes. list them. Yes. The second one is also talking about the fact that the, the regulation empowers the minister okay, to, to mandate any of these courier services to undertake free, serv a free delivery okay, in, in matters that has to do with maybe national interest or the universal postal uh, uh, regulations. No, that's a problem on its own because these people are in business. For, for making profit for survival. The third one that we are also concerned is that which says that um, uh, any, any uh, uh, um, offer issues or certificate of uh, uh, share certificate or statement that has to be delivered that is less than 0 0.5 kg yeah. should just be recorded by these courier services and be referred to NIPOS to carry out the delivery. Failure to do so, they will be charged 90% of, of the cost. Mm. So those, in a nutshell, those are the three areas. We'll probably be looking at the implication of this uh, I know, as we move on. So we, we just don't want people to focus only on, on the increment. There are, these other ones are as, as uh, troublesome, even as, 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 as the increment itself, because these three can run anybody out of business in no time. You know, I, 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 when I read through the regulation, I, I, I was, uh, uh, my fear was, uh, what exactly were the regulators thinking um, to have come out with um, uh, at the time when people are talking about, economists are talking about how we could um, stimulate growth uh, in the small and medium scale enterprises, um, in a time when economies are looking at how they can encourage um, uh, small enterprises uh, uh, to stay alive. Uh, and then we have such, um, uh, some quarters will call these um, uh, uh, draconian, draconian regulations. You see, to put it uh, mildly, it's just a way, it shows how uncoordinated some activities of, of the government is. You know, the, 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 the PBEC, for example, this is a presidential initiative on the issue of uh, ease of doing business, is making effort to ensure that businesses survive. Take, for example, the 2%. Now, uh, FIRS, as a way of uh, um, offering palliatives to, to small businesses, came up and said, oh, go, the New Finance Act, yeah. that any businesses that end up to less than... Uh, 25 million or around 25 yeah. million are exempted from CIT and also VAT. So people were rejoicing. We were saying, okay, that's good for business. And then what was taken off from them in terms of tax payment, you've come now to say 2% of revenue. We're not even talking about of profit Profits. here. You said revenue. So if you pay 2% of your revenue, how much are these uh, companies making? And then it's going to impact probably on their profit. And if that is impacted upon, it's going to affect what they make in a year. It might affect job, it might lead to job losses. And then what are we saying here? So it, it has to be balanced in a way. If you want to raise money, because it, uh, government agencies seem to be so keen on revenue generation these days that they, they care less about the survival the of businesses. those businesses yeah. they are supposed to get revenue from. And in the first place, some of these agencies exist because of these uh, businesses. And this business's survival is as important as their own survival as well. So the second point is, if you say you want 
go, uh, these courier uh, operators to uh, register any mail that's less than uh, 0 0.5 kg. There's a challenge here. You have NIPOS acting as a regulator and as a player. As a player. It's, not, it's unfair. It's not a level playing ground. So w this has to be looked at. It's just like you bring in these telecom I industries and you tell uh, uh, the Nitel. defunct Nitel to, to, to be regulating. So, but then if you look through the, the Nigeria uh, Postal Services Act, you will see that some of these activities or actions being done by uh, NIPOS is actually the sole prerogative of the minister. It's the minister's right to determine how and when to uh, review a licensing fee, not that of NIPOS. So if, if you have a, a level playing, uh, uh, playing field, you, you see that businesses will thrive. And when businesses thrive, you see people will get encouraged, investors will be encouraged to come into the country and play in that field. As it is now, it's, 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 it's a threat to, to uh, investment for those who probably are looking at that field. What stops NITEL, I mean, sorry, what stops NIPOS, for example, in developing their business model such that they become very attractive to the people? If I have so much confidence in what NIPOS does, I'm, I'm confident that my, whatever I'm sending through them will be delivered, is secured, and is fast. Why do I need to look elsewhere if theirs is cheaper? So the, there's not enough competitive avenue for players to play. Rather, you are muzzling even those who are in, in that field. And, 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 and it's scary. You know, let's, let's, look, let's look at the conversation around um, the need for a Nigerian Postal Commission. I don't know, how, how do you think that can play out? Could that, could that um, take us anywhere in all of this? Absolutely. That is, that is desirable, if you ask me, because that puts everybody on the plate. You, you survive, and then you think. You see a situation whereby those in business have to struggle for survival, have to struggle to pay their salaries, and then you put them in a, in a disadvantaged position where government agencies, who whether they make profit or not, are paid salary, or their pay salaries are made to you know to compete. It's not it's not it's not balanced. So if you like you have the NERC for, for, for the electricity, you have the NCC for the telecoms, a postal commission would be uh, a desirable thing where they they regulate now. They take charge of all the complaints and then it's going to help. NIPOS will now be put in a place where they also have to be competitive enough to survive in that field. I think it's something that needs to be considered by the government. Oh, very well said, uh, Dr. Dr. Matthew. So how, how, how far uh, does the chamber uh, intend to take this advocacy? How far are you taking this advocacy? Well, we take it as far as, uh, as we can. Of course, you know we have uh, a good working relationship with the, with the uh, government and, and then the minister also. We, we are going to reach out, not just uh, what, we are, what we are doing now is also part of it, yeah. so that we'll be able to draw the attention of the government. There, there needs to be uh, that understanding that regulations or regulatory agencies are not meant to stifle or destroy businesses. They are meant to encourage. If you read the uh, World Bank uh, Ease of Doing Business report last year, it stated there that the purpose of regulation is to engender the survival of businesses, is to ensure that businesses are encouraged to perform you know, to their uh, 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 optimal level, not to bring a situation whereby they are here today and tomorrow they are gone because of, uh, uh, like you mentioned, uh, draconian yeah, <laughs> regulations. regulations. It, is, it's, it, it's, it is painful um, because we, we kind of read what happens in other clans. Uh, we, we, we heard right about what happened in Ghana, uh, where the government uh, probably gave out um, free power supply for certain, certain individuals for, for, for a long period of time during the COVID. Uh, even water supply would, uh, would be free from now till, till the end of the year in Ghana. But we are still waiting to know what our, our government will be giving us as palliatives uh, for this COVID-19. Rather, what we get are uh, one tax after another, one tax after another. These, I must confess, uh, uh, could be a huge disincentive for, for business. I agree with you. We see one, one attitude that needs to change when it comes to regulation in this country, is the way regulators see business owners. When we begin to see them as partners in progress, when our regulators begin to see these people as their clients that needs to thrive, things will change. But as it is now, it's, it's somewhat like we against them. Mm. It's like we will show them. And that is what you keep on seeing. You, you know, you are not after these businesses. They are not criminals. 
they are pro promoting and they are supporting the economy. Now, if you talk about uh, Ghana examples, where you, the example you've just given, you begin to ask, government tend to do one thing that you want to praise them for, and then th there seems to be another action that takes away that and same and thing you just that. finished praise, yeah. praising them for. So that's a challenge. But what it shows is that there's need for Alignment. proper coordination. Yeah. So everybody understands that we need these small businesses to thrive. If the economy is going to grow or if the economy is going to survive, these uh, uh, businesses are the engine room. They, they are the, the, the contributors we need because they, they, they ensure that you no know, information is passed and things move on smoothly in the economy. But when you come and you make it difficult for them to operate, then what are we saying? It's, it's just like government is not following what they are. We are uh, however, we are happy that the... The, the minister, Dr. Issa uh, Pantami, Pantami, came up and said, okay, no, he has not approved. But you see, the attention seems to be solely on the increment. No, we want the entire document to be reviewed. That's the position of LCCI. We want them to look at that document. Don't just say we are going to bring down the, the, the fee or take it back, and then you leave all these other ones we have mentioned, because these other ones by themselves will impede on the smooth operations of uh, these uh, career services uh, companies. You know, Dr. Ojo, uh, I, I need to let you go, but before, before I do that, uh, just in a very nutshell, how, how would you appraise the business environment in Nigeria in recent times, the business climate? The business climate, of course, we know for about three months it's been in the law, it's just gradually opening, and uh, you will see that people are trying to catch up uh, from the past uh, months that has been lost, but it's not been easy. This is just like someone trying to, to survive and you have a big feet or foot trying to you know, trample down the yeah. same person. So the business is gradually, business environment is gradually picking up. Of course, it has not yet getting to the point where we can say hooray, but gradually uh, uh, some sectors are just being uh, opened. Some are still under lock up till now, especially the uh, entertainment industry. industry yeah. uh, hospitality. Uh, hospitality. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, Hopefully, looking at the figures, it seems to be uh, the curve seems to, or appears to be flattening, yeah. and we hope that we encourage the government to open up those the other sectors so that we can try. If those ones are open on time, we probably might not uh, uh, experience the kind of uh, doom uh, being predicted. And even if we are going to recession, it might not be to the extent to which it's been. Uh, it has been predicted. Thank you so very much, um, Dr. Matthew Ojo, who is the Director of uh, Research and Advocacy, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you so very much for talking to us on the show. Thank you for having me.